what is going on. So this is upholstery foam and I've got a great big roll of it and I just wanted to show you what it looks like as a roll. So now I can show you what it looks like cut up. The reason I'm showing you upholstery foam today is we're going to use pressing pillows. We're going to make a pressing pillow and we're also going to use it because I want to show you how easy they are to make yourself and how great they work with your Cricut Easy Press. They really do make all the difference. So you can see I've got that great big roll. Now it is an inch thick. I think that this is too thick. I think it only needs to be half an inch. You can get it in different sizes. I will link to where I got it below on eBay. But as I say, this is an inch thick and I do think it's a little bit on the chunky side. I'm pretty sure you'll get away with half an inch thickness. But it's really cheap. That huge roll that I've just shown you goes right across this desk. And it was £7, I think it was. And you can see I've got three pressing pillows here and then I've got another four cut out and I've still got loads left as well and it's just a really inexpensive way to make your own pressing pillow. So as we've talked about before when using the Easy Press, it doesn't like anything that's slightly lifted, it likes to have a nice seal so if you've got seams or you've got zips or you've got like an uneven surface, it is going to affect the way that the Easy Press works. And so pressing pillows are great. So all you need is this upholstery foam, and all I've done is I've just used a ruler, I've made several different sizes. I've got 8x8, 6x6, 5x7, 4x4. These are five and a half, five, and then I've got a great big one here, which I think is 10 by 10, it might even be 11 by 11. And all I do is I cut them out with some scissors, and then I'm just going to sew some fabric around them. Now, the fabric. As you can see, I've decorated these with some beautiful fabric. This is actually a tea towel fabric, and this is just a normal cotton fabric. Now, they work fine, except for anything that's got a kind of sticky, shiny surface. So I did a live video on Facebook and I used just like a makeup bag. And inside the makeup bag, it was a washable kind of surface and this stuck to it. And I mean, it really stuck to it and I had to prise it out. So what I would advise is that you either use a Teflon sheet and you can get these from the pound shop, you can get them off eBay, Amazon. You use them with your heat press anyway, just get a few more and you can then cover your foam with Teflon sheets. That will work really well. You can also use ironing board fabric so if you've got you see a nice ironing board cover you can use that as well I am going to cover them in fabrics but that's because I'm aware of what can happen with them so for example with this one I'm not going to use that in that particular bag again anything with a slippery shiny surface or a washable surface I won't be using this one again I'm not sure whether I can use this one I would probably do a Teflon one but there are options as I say you really want it to be Teflon or an ironing board cover I'm pretty sure will work well because you know they're meant to withstand heat use fabric at your own caution because if it takes the heat and then it gets stuck, you are going to have to unpeel it. I just wanted them to look pretty. So once you've cut your upholstery foam out, we're then going to go and take them to the sewing machine. So you can see I've got my fabric and I've got my 8x8 block. So I've placed it inside of my fabric and I've just folded it over so my foam block is encased in it so that we only need to sew three sides and I'm going to sew two sides and leave one open. I'm going to use a zigzag stitch for this just so it's a little bit more secure and I'm just going to sew all the way along. I am going to do a back stitch just to make sure that it's fully secure.
I'm then going to remove my foam block. I'm then going to turn it the right way round and then place my foam block back inside. And I'm then just going to stitch down this edge here and then that's my pressing pillow made. It's really that nice and simple and easy. I can then come in and trim this off as well. So you can see that I've done my pressing pillows now and these are absolutely fantastic. So this is obviously smaller than my easy press. So if I place my easy press on this, we're going to have an issue with the zip. And also you've got the seams all the way round. So you do need to use a pressing pillow with something like this. So I'm just going to place it in there. So I've got some foil HTV here. Now I'm actually going to press this at 340 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 seconds. The reason is not the foil HTV, the reason is this material. This is why I say you always want to get to know your products, your different fabrics, your different materials, even your different HTVs because they can be different as well. And they are going to require some tweaking in the terms of heat and times. So I'm going to do everything today, glitter, foil, normal. I'm going to do it at 340 for 30 seconds. So I've got my pillow pad in there. So I'm just going to bring my easy press over. I'm going to place it on and I'm just going to press the C and I'm not going to use a huge amount of pressure. I'm just going to hold it in place and you can see that everything is lifted up and this is going to make the pressing with the easy press a lot easier. I'm then just going to very gently start peeling away and I then want to go back in this time with a Teflon sheet because I've removed my carrier sheet and I'm just going to make sure that that is fully adhered and I'm just going to keep it on the same temperature for 30 seconds. And I know that that is fully adhered because I can actually see the pattern of my bag coming through my HTV and that's how you know that your HTV is fully adhered to your item. So I've moved my pressing pillow to this side so I'm just going to come and place my fox on here and I'm going to press at 340 for 30 seconds. Now I don't want my easy press to touch this because there's no barrier on here so I'm just going to make sure I don't want to put a Teflon sheet on but I'm just going to make sure that it doesn't touch this piece of HTV and then I'm going to go in and start the countdown and again I'm not putting that much pressure on it I'm just holding it in place and I like to leave it just for a few seconds to cool down. These are all hot peel, but I just like to give them a few seconds just to cool down a bit and then I'll peel them. I'm then going to place my Teflon sheet over and I'm going to go in again at 340 for 30 seconds. And if it's balanced on there, which it will be with a pressing pillow, you actually don't need to exert any pressure. I mean, there's no hands here and it's going to adhere completely to this material without any problems. So I've placed a glitter piece down at the bottom here and I've got a foil. I'm going to do these at the same time. So again, I'm going to put my Teflon sheet over and I'm not changing my setting at all. And again, I'm not applying any pressure to this because I want to show you how effective these pressing pillows are and they are so inexpensive to make as well. Again, I'm just going to give that a few seconds just to cool itself down. And you saw I didn't apply any pressure to this and we did do a live video on this on Facebook and you'll see in that I do exactly the same thing and I am not applying pressure and it just works beautifully. Again, I'm going to go in and just make sure that that is fully adhered. And again, I don't need to add any pressure to this. I'm just going to let it sit there on top. As long as it's evenly balanced, you can let it just sit. So I've got another foil HTV and I've also just got some plain HTV as well. So again, I'm just going to go ahead 
And of course you don't need to, if you've got something flat like a t-shirt, you don't need to use these. As long as your surface is nice and even, then you won't have any problem. These pressing pillows are more for things with seams and zips. So I've got some glitter HDV here on the ears. And again, I'm just going to place my easy press on top and just let it count down. So I've got another piece of glitter HDV and again exactly the same as every time before. So as always I'm just going to do a quick scrape and then I'm going to go in and just peel that back and then I've just got to add my foil bow and then I've got a glitter piece to go in the middle of my bow. And then we're just going to go in one last time and make sure that everything is fully adhered. 